Hi, I'm Brian Creer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is vapor pressure. Whenever you have a liquid in a closed system, meaning that you've got some sort of covering so that nothing can escape, vapor pressure occurs. Whenever you leave a liquid by itself, some particles will turn to gas. You know this if you leave water out, you'll eventually find some that has evaporated. That's because while the particles of the liquid are bouncing into each other, they're transferring kinetic energy. Eventually, one of them, or even a number of them, will gain enough energy to actually escape the liquid phase and become a gas. In a closed system, that is what happens. And of course, some of the gases will return to liquids. But then some of the liquids will come back to gases. So, vapor pressure occurs. The amount of vapor pressure is affected by the intermolecular bonds in your substance. The stronger they are, the harder it will be for liquids to escape into the gaseous phase. So there will be less vapor pressure. It's also affected by temperature. If you have high temperature, there's more kinetic energy to go around, so a lot more particles will be escaping into the gas phase. Problems involving vapor pressure are uncommon, but when you do encounter one, they tend to be a bit long, so let's run through one of them. Let's say you have a 2-liter container, and it's closed, so no gases can escape. It's filled with 1 liter of water, which is about 500 moles. After letting it sit for a while, you come back to the same 2 liter container to find that you only have 0.65 liters of water and 300 moles. Given that the entire system was kept at 290 kelvins the whole time, what is your vapor pressure? Well, let's start by listing our variables to see what we've got. We've got moles, so usually that's an N. We have a volume, we've got a V, and a temperature, T. Now that's looking a lot like the ideal gas law to me. PV equals NRT. So let's find out what our exact values are before plugging in. We know that we initially had 500 moles of liquid water and now we have 300 moles. The remaining 200 must have evaporated and become part of the gas. Since pressure is what we're looking for, we need to find everything uh, we can about that gas. So N is 200 moles. We know our T already. That's 290 Kelvin. We already have R, since that's a constant, and all we're left with is volume. Remember that a gas will always expand to occupy whatever volume it's got. Since you've got a 2 liter container and 0.65 liters of water, all we have to do is subtract the space the water takes up from the total space to find out how much space the gas takes up. 2 minus 0 0.65 gives you 1.35, so 1.35 liters. We've got all our variables. Time to plug in. P times a volume of 1.35 liters equals 200 moles. R is 0 0.0821. And lastly, our temperature, just move that down here, 290 kelvins. Simplify. We'll plan this side first. P times 1.35 liters is equal to 4761.8. So then P is that number divided by 1.35, or just about 3,527 atmospheres. And that is your vapor pressure. To recap, vapor pressure will always occur if you've got a liquid in a closed system, meaning that no gas can escape. That's because kinetic energy will be transferred around the liquid until it meets up in one or a few particles that will escape and become a gas. This is affected by intermolecular bonds. The stronger the bonds, the less vapor pressure, because it'll be harder for liquids to become gases. If you're, there's higher temperature, though, you will get more vapor pressure, because there's more kinetic energy to go around, and so it's easier to become a gas. Vapor pressure problems usually involve some kind of gas law, usually the ideal one. So just remember how to do this. All right, that's all for now. Good on Brian Prier. See you next time.